Now it's recording. Now it's recording. Now it's recording. Uh, now, now I don't want to talk. Uh, fine, I'm going to talk. So uh, this is the Drive to School podcast, and obviously I'm in a worse mood because Lisa is back. Let's go. What? Continue on. Continue on. Continue uh, on. Continue on. We're talking, we, we do potpourri, which means I just tell you what to talk about, and then you say you don't want to talk. Um, you got a really wrinkled shirt on. <laughs> Why do you have to... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to hurt my feelings? This I'm is an sorry. audio podcast for some people, it's like literally lighting. a couple of people. It's the lighting. Uh, you have a wrinkled, bald head. Um, <laughs> it's actually really smooth. Uh, do you? Yeah. It's good. Doesn't get dry it's in good. the winter. Yeah. No. The worst thing is that in the winter you've got to uh, 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 gauge the days that you shave it because uh, if it's going to be really cold and then you shave it, the stocking just slides right off the head because there's no stubble to grab onto it. It's bald people problems that nobody really realizes until you actually become bald. Thanks for sharing the grim future. Um, <laughs> speaking of grim futures, this is actually the thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is Grace. we can talk about Amazing Grace and why it's it's not a good hymn. Um, let's just find let's let's go for it. Uh, Amazing Grace is a bad hymn, and and I know that you disagree with me. I didn't so, disagree, but okay, like, yeah, you don't want to take said... that line now that it's recording, do you? No, no. Listen. I just had uh, th this is like this is the this is the hobby horse that uh, a lot of Lutheran pastors get on. And I've never actually had somebody sit down and break down why it's so bad. Did Everyone you know that? Says, Ugh, did, did you know? Grace. Did you know that we actually had to rewrite the words because the original uh, the original words failed doctrinal review because it it oh, was okay. grace that taught my heart to fear. That's not true. Grace That's is actually a, a comfort. Grace is only a, a comfort. Um, it, it's it's one of those things that we we actually have to stand on. That that if you have to rewrite the whole thing because it, it it doesn't understand law, that that actually makes you scared of death. And grace that actually is it's Christ for you and not you getting better. It, it's a rough thing to do. And the other part about Amazing Grace that makes it tough is that we, we really only sing it at funerals anymore. Um, I don't know if it's the thing you want to go out on. I, I just don't. Um, like I, it's not to take away from the resurrection or, or to sort of leave a mark on anybody who, whose sort of last memory of, of their, their loved one has to do with this hymn. Um, but it, it's just sort of the recognition that I want them to be tied to Jesus. I, I, want, I, want, I want to hear about Jesus. Yeah, right. Sure. I'll go for it. You know, I, I, I haven't actually looked up the original language. I just know it's in the LSP. So it has to be fine. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. On with Christian shoulders, all that stuff. Yeah. This is actually the topic I wanted to pick. I wanted to pick the church militant. Oh, onward Christian soldiers. All right. Yeah. Um, because this is actually this is what everybody goes to onward Christian soldiers that that march along and everybody, you know, they have a pep in their step. And good thing we're all getting along while we're we're doing it and nobody's sort of bickering by by in the back seat. Um, we we talk about the the um the saints on earth. We talk about what Christianity is today and the the sort of the theological language that we have for it is the church militant. Militant. Right. And it bugs me because I am Why? depressed all the time. Help me. Help me not be depressed about church militant because we get drug along. And if this was how the army worked, I don't think we would win wars. Like this is, we are the North Korea of armies. If you're going to look at Christendom. <laughs> what? Well, North Korea, I think they, they gave a pretty good fight there, the Korean War with MASH, right? Oh, no, the new North Korean one where everybody's clearly starving. The, the soldiers okay. are all smaller than everybody else. And like the, the that tank, I'm pretty sure it's cardboard and I can see your feet carrying it along in the parade. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is the this is the issue. Ah, uh, so why? Okay, so uh, why don't you like church militant? Why is it? It's not that sad? I don't. It's that I really, really want to like the church militant. But every time sure. we, we sing one of these church militant songs, I look around and see what's there, and I'm like, if this is who's fighting, y'all, I don't know how that's gonna go. Oh, see, okay. I think we oftentimes um, uh, we we have this desire for the uh, the good old days. Yeah, of, of everything, right? Uh, but if we're I wasn't even around for them, but I want them back, right? Uh, I guess we'll speak specifically about the church, the good old days when when everybody did everything that they were supposed to. And now, I'm not Wait, saying hang on. when when did we have that? The good old days, you, you like before when. the fall, when everybody yeah. did everything no, they no, were no, supposed no. to. The good old, day. the good old good day old before the fall. It was the good old days. Um, I I think there's certainly seasons and times within church denominations, even with, within congregations, where 
Ah, oh, goodness, this is this is the tough thing because you 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 can see you can see individuals, you can see congregations, you can see denominations from a temple perspective being, I don't know, more engaged, more whatever you want to, however you want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's about it. like because this is a podcast to kids, and so the kids are only hearing about the good old days; they don't remember them. Right, they're, they're hearing about the times in which uh, 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 seventy-five percent of people went to church, um, and and everybody who uh, was catechized, you you still grew up with them, and they were still in church. Right, mm -hmm. maybe they switched congregations, but um, and those those days aren't here anymore. So you're right; all the kids are kind of looking around, saying, "This is like the far and few between sort of thing." It's it's mm -hmm. it, it, I'm the only one of my friends who goes to church on a very regular basis. Uh, what's this church militant that we're talking about? And I think this is actually what we see. And the I don't want to say true church militant. I think this is the more comforting church militant. Uh, when you look at the at the early church, when you look at uh, the times in which the church is actually going through persecution, and it's small, and it's puny, and it's weak, and and really there's nothing that we can actually do to, to, to sustain the church, to keep the church, it just looks like everything is going to fall flat on its face. That's that's the sort of church militant, I think, where we, we hear best at the comfort of that third article of the creed. Where it's the Holy Spirit who's calling, gathering, and lightning, and sanctifying His one true church here on earth. Uh, it's it's His work uh, that's doing this. And so, am am I marching alongside uh, of Jesus? Uh, absolutely not. Um, he's he's carrying me every single step of the way. Uh, does and, he and march? That, does he march? Yeah, uh, somebody's got to. There's a song I, about it. I, well, no, I don't think he marches uh, so much as he. Uh, as he uh, limps along the way to Calvary, um, and that that's that's his sort of warfare. Um, it's the weak sort of warfare. Um, that onward Christian soldiers hymn, and I don't even have it in front of me uh, to to pick it apart line by line. And so maybe we this isn't have. maybe this no because but we don't have time to do that. No, but but I mean, like the idea of that, we we all like you said, we automatically go to the the the. Uh, the people in, in, in bootstraps and, and marching literally off to war. Yeah. What, what is the what is the war of the Christian church? It's it's the war uh, against it's sin. To death, win the culture over, right? So that everybody thinks like us. No. It's the war against no? sin, death, and the devil that Christ has actually won for us. Oh. And then it's actually speaking that victory into, into the culture. Um, but the victory isn't ours to win. The victory has already been won. It's not my job to... Uh, to get my neighbor into church and believe, um, I proclaim the gospel and 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 what and who Christ is and what He has done for us, um, and take my licks along the way because that's the fallen world that we live in. I think that's the church militant hmm. uh, in, in the proper sense and the proper understanding, um, where it's we're still in a fight, but it's not a fight for us to win. We're still we're still licking our wounds. We're still getting beat up from a temporal perspective um maybe from the people next door also from our sin and our own death and the disease that hits us and, and satan constantly tempting us and trying to steal the gospel away from us this is the this is the war um it's not the culture war it's not the uh i've, I've got to beat back everybody who's anti-christian and win america over to the church again there's actually some hope behind there. Like it's it's not sort of lower your standards, but it's it's actually to raise them. Like I, I think that if if your your goal is just that um we would we would embrace a Christian nation or something like that again, it's it's a laudable thing that more people would would look to Jesus. It's a laudable thing that more people would even just look to the law. Um, right. to, you don't even need Jesus for that. You can have a Judeo Christian value that that is rooted in the Ten Commandments uh, with no Jesus, and society would still go better. Um, but right. aim higher. Like really, because there, there's no salvation if that's all that there is. The 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 governments of this world will topple, and if they somehow manage to make it to the last day, Jesus will come and topple them, and then give life everlasting. The thing that we're aiming for is is got to be higher than just sort of what if it, what if we could build something in this world. It, it's it's a great call to to sort of aim higher. We we need more of that, I think. Yeah, uh, the whole the whole thing with Jesus, you know, uh, uh, in front of Pilate. Uh, saying the the crazy thing of my kingdom is not of this world um 
and then yet we wish that want to make America, it that way right exactly now that he's now that he's dead and resurrected now and can it be? heavens now it's our responsibility uh to the disciples that. thought that too i mean they're they're dealing right. with jesus right before the ascension they're like lord now is the time can we can we go and chase everybody out now? of jerusalem is it now is it now is it now that i get a call down thunder from heaven onward yeah. christian soldiers <laughs> uh, it, it's a comfort to me so so thank you for that because i i mean i i know we only got about 10 minutes to um you know uh, offer veiled insults toward each other um but at the same time uh if your mark of the Christian church and its ability to fight is in, in yourself, uh, it's always going to look like a paper tiger. Um, but if the mark of the church is Christ being crucified and risen from the dead, then the, the battle's won and, and we're just marching or even being drug along towards right. glory. Right. And, and we have the victory. It's the now and not yet stuff. And so the church triumphant isn't that they have triumphed over is that Christ has brought them through this veil of tears, uh, through the actual death that sought to kill them everlasting, uh, and then brought them to the place where he has said, there is no more tears, there's no more pain, there's no more sorrow. Here, receive in full what I want on the cross for you. Right, and, and if, go ahead. No, and I said, and, and that's the very same promise and thing that we receive, but it's that, it's that as theologians call it, the, the now and not yet. It's here. Take, eat. This is this is my body. Take, drink. This is my blood. Receive the forgiveness of sins. You have everything that I want on the cross. Yeah, and this would be, I mean, to, to sort of circle back around why Amazing Grace is not my favorite hymn. Um, I want to talk about these things directly and, and not sort of talk about the things they might do imperfectly in this world. Um, uh, Amazing Grace, as it is printed in the LSB, is true. Um, but let's talk about the thing that's actually affecting it. Let's talk about Christ himself all the way through, because if you just sort of look at us and I can say, you are the church militant, you are Christian soldiers, you are the ones who ought to be the light and fight against the darkness. But if you want to try and measure this in yourself, you got to recognize that there's still darkness in you until that last great day when, when Christ returns in glory. So let's, let's focus on the thing that daily pours in light into a dark world. Yeah, I really, I really wish they would have said jesus wants in that him <laughs> maybe <laughs> on that note you know, I, I was dry i was driving here uh racing back uh uh so i could make it here in time uh and something made me happy um mm. it's nothing major but um uh driving uh in the opposite direction i'm pretty sure i saw uh, uh cruella de Vil. She looked, it, it was, it was the top down and like, <laughs> no, it was white hair though. She had the sunglasses on. It was a gaunt face and she was holding a cigarette with one of those like, long. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. And she was just driving like this. And I, I don't know. There might've been a Dalmatian in the back. I'm not sure. I hope it's okay. <laughs> well, no, it's turning into a coat right now. <laughs> Peter, please don't cancel us. <sighs> That's all. out.